What's the psychology that's happening here when someone else brings up a resistance? It seems to bring up our insecurity as the seller. Well, because what you're wanting, if you're entering that room, most people are wanting a sale. And so the second that you're met with resistance, you feel like you're further away from that which you want, right? And all the things that getting that sale will get you. So it's natural for, for a person to feel, you know, separated from the thing that they're desperately needing or as if they've made some kind of a mistake and they can't accept that about themselves, which brings up all kinds of self-worth issues. And, you know, if you're attached enough to what it is that you're selling or to sales in general, attached in terms of your identity to that, then when somebody puts up a resistance, you feel personal rejection. Yeah. Yeah. I, I find it's fascinating because when when you're in a space of sales, I always say it's one of the best paths for personal growth because you're just forced of having a high volume of interaction with other humans, which have different needs, different perspectives, and you're trying to find consensus. So it's like, if you're trying to grow, it, I, I would say it's because you have to interact with other people. If you're in sales, there's so many people, you're in a process of high interaction. So it seems to be a super highway for growth. Have you noticed that for some of the people or maybe yourself, you had to step into sales in a big way and that has had been a thread uh, that happened throughout the process? I'm a whole different subject. Um, what I do notice is that sales is an incredible, incredible path for personal growth because it, it will force you to come up against these dominant themes that are preventing your own alignment with whatever it is you're wanting or, you know, your own personal authenticity or whatever it is. So some of these blocks that a person runs into, and this is where personal growth is, you know, A plus supreme manipulation is a theme that I see. Um, obviously we just talked about rejection issues of rejection, which brings back all those childhood, you know, memories and issues, right? Um, we've got issues around, you know, people charging what they're worth. That's especially the case when you're selling some service and that service is yourself. Um, also it like, it holds a mirror up to your own ego and all, all of the elements of your ego. We talked about that when we, when we were talking about the fact that we, salespeople have this tendency to make it all about them instead of make it about the reality and the needs that are present and the perspectives that are present within that person who you're looking at as the person you're trying to make the sales to. Um, judgment is another one that is a good one that comes up for people who are in sales, you know, because when somebody is humming and hawing around making a decision that they obviously should make from your perspective, and they're just, it's really easy to just fall into judgment of the other person. And then it throws a wall up and then you're not going to get anywhere with them. Also, um, planning, right? A lot of people have a very hard time planning things out. And it, it is so difficult to make a sale when you haven't planned things out. But I find a lot of people are really, really resistant to that. Um, another thing that I notice in terms of personal growth is this attachment to a specific outcome. So in sales, you get a lot more addiction to the how of it, you know, the how for what I want is that I'm going to make this person buy this thing, <laughs> you know, um, and the universe loves to be like, oh, really? We have an attachment to an outcome, right? Another issue that I, I notice or blockage that I, I notice is people not being willing to be adaptive. I notice that people who are in sales like to get into a rut, right? And sales brings this huge opportunity with it for people to have to be incredibly adaptive. And like you said, meeting all kinds of people from all different walks of life forces you into an adaptation, which is, you know, impressive. Another blockage that I notice is, is blaming others, right? When you go to make a sale and it doesn't go the way that you want to make it. It's tempting to want to blame the other person, maybe their mental blocks, maybe to, you know, blame the circumstance, maybe to blame. I mean, there's a million things you could blame instead of looking at oneself and how one is, you know, maybe in the way of their own uh, desire process around their uh, job or career. Also, and, that, and this one I'm really interested in, is that in terms of growth and sales, there is this absolute necessity to be present with the person who you're trying to make a sales to. So anybody who has an issue around being present or is an issue around helping somebody to gain clarity and really helping them through that whole process of resolving resistance and of welcoming whatever change that sale is going to bring in for them, they don't do so well with sales. But therein, you know, therein lies that huge growth potential 
to be present. And even that opens up doors for us in relationships. I mean, the better you get at being really, really present there for the person you're trying to sell to, the better you get at being present in all your relationships. And again, it's like bringing yourself out of the narcissism back to the other person, back to the other person, back to the other person. Yeah. Oh my God. I, I love this final part because it's so true. Like the biggest thing that I've been able to change in the way that I show up in sales is this concept of presence. And again, it goes back to what we were saying at the beginning. There's so many times I would find myself, you know, being so attached to the outcome, wanting the how to go along my process, thinking about what's the next question I need to ask while the person's answering. So I'm not even truly being present. I'm yep. not truly being attentive. And here I've just lost the whole point of the conversation. I'm like distracted by the how, and so the what that's happening doesn't even have a purpose.